Hello everyone and welcome back to Sendix Weber channel and we're back for another epic video. Well actually we're going to start on a different note today. I'm going to start by looking at the UKV um, for the next day. Now please let me know if you like to see this as a, a little feature at the start of the videos. Um, just something a little extra where we look at the, um, the next day um, trends in terms of precipitation um, anomalies and the temperatures um, for the following day. So in this case it's Wednesday the 5th. Um, and we can also look at the rainfall moving through the country at the moment. So as I'm recording this so late, this area of rainfall is moving across central, southern and southwest, clearing into the North Sea through uh, by around 9, 10 p.m. tonight and leaving behind a few patchy showers before we do see more shower bursts packing into the north and the west of the UK through um, the early hours of Wednesday morning. They're going to be quite... Um, Persistent in the north, um, particularly for Scotland and um, Northern Ireland, um, and also parts of northwestern England as well, um, as they clear through again to the northeast. So quite a showery day for the north and the west, but quite a uh, gloomy day with lots of cloud around. Maybe a few breaks where there could be some sunshine in the south and the southeast, but overall, it's a pretty, it's a pretty moody picture. Um, having a look at the temperatures uh, for tomorrow, they are pretty mild. You've got to admit, quite muggy, really, for the time of year. Uh, for central southern and um, and for the Midlands, uh, maybe into the southwest, reaching 16 to 17 degrees. Further northwards, cooler, of course, with more of a northwesterly tilt to the airflow. But again, pretty mild for the whole of the UK. But yeah, let me know if you'd like to see that as a regular feature in the videos. And anyway... Was that a voice crack? <laughs> I'll move the video. Right then, so today we're going to be looking at the ECM um, pressure anomalies for the next six weeks, which also show us the temperatures and the precipitation forecast uh, for the next few weeks. Now, of course, this is speculation into the extreme longer term, but for the next few weeks, especially through November, it might give us an idea of what to expect. If you are enjoying today's video, consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel we're on the road to 3k i know it's a long way but we're going to get there and if you're interested in any of the send it merch then um check all uh, check out all the links down below um obviously if you want anything please send it to paypal and all those prices down below include postage and packaging so the whole price nothing more <laughs> because postage and packaging is expensive these days i have you know <laughs> anyway let's get on with the video enough rambling so for the first week, we from the 10th to the 17th of November, we have high pressure position between Iceland and Scandi. We are sending it towards Scandi, but not quite. But the winds are in from an easterly direction. That sort of high pressure there would be quite gloomy, would, would feel quite chilly, but would bring a lot of doom and gloom, dull, gloomy, grey conditions most likely. 500 mm heights also show this um, trend, high pressure just to the north and the east, and winds in from a northeasterly direction, east northeasterly direction. Temperature anomalies are around average to slightly above average for the north, maybe near normal in the south, but uh, if you look across the continent into eastern Europe, it is pretty cold there. We are seeing a bit of a north northeasterly flow um, affecting um, Eastern Europe. We're kind of like a, a block and we're on the periphery of any of that cold air as usual. But all the cold is going into Eastern Europe, the UK and Iceland acting as a bit of a block as usual. Uh, moving on to week two, um, the um, 17th to 24th of November. Well, this shows a bit of a different trend. Higher pressure ridging through the UK maybe. So mostly dry again. Week 2 with the 500 mm heights also shows higher pressure ridging through the UK, uh, ridging through Western Europe to be honest, uh, mostly keeping things mostly dry, maybe a bit of frost and fog around, um, not too much going on there though, and I mean, temperature anomalies are um, around a slightly above average precipitation anomalies, near normal so not really much of a signal, maybe slightly drier than average, particularly in the north and the west and southwest, but a bit of a bit of a not a definitive trend there. Into the final week of November, then you can see. Well, actually, this could be quite interesting. Low pressures positions to our north east over Denmark. Higher pressure, maybe this white area to the north. It's a little bit of an unknown, but that could be a northeasterly wind. Five hundred millimeter heights. Do they illustrate it any better? They've got a, yeah, that actually does actually. Higher pressure to the north. Lower pressure to the east of Europe. Maybe a north easterly flow, but of course, not much, too much to base that on there. And the temperature anomalies are slightly above average, so a mild of an average week for the final week of November. Precipitation, no signal, but maybe slightly wetter 
over parts of the Balkans, Siberia and Eastern Europe, maybe drag it up towards Iceland, but that is a very, very not a certain trend whatsoever. Right then, we're getting we're cooking on gas into the first week of December. Now we have higher pressure up towards the north and northeast between Greenland and Scandi. Low pressure out to the west, that might be bringing in a westerly flow. There's not too much to go on there, though, to be honest. 500 mm highs, they agree. Well, we do see higher pressure strongly built to the north and northwest of the UK. That could bring in a northeasterly flow, driest for Scotland and the north, um, northwest, but um, maybe a bit more of an easterly flow in the east and southeast, so maybe slightly cooler there. Temperature anomalies are again remaining above average, above average for the last well, for the first week of November. Precipitation, no signal. <laughs> That's pretty typical. And moving on finally to week five, the 8th to the 15th of December. Well, that higher pressure to the north signal does sort of remain. Lower pressure to the south, that looks like an easterly flow. Um, lower pressure to the south, high pressure to the north, easterly flow looks quite likely there. Maybe interesting. Um, 500 below heights, high pressure strongly blocking to the north, and low pressure maybe to the south in this white area. Again, could we bring in a northeasterly flow or an easterly flow? Temperature anomalies may be showing that because it is cooling down to around average to no signal, but we are a long way out now um, where reliability really starts to drop off. Not that it's already uns uh, not that it's already reliable a few weeks away. And precipitation anomalies for the second week of December are looking drier than average to the north. Um, and that's about it, maybe indicating that higher pressure to the north, but other than that, not too much of a signal. So very, um, very uncertain charts, I must say, but most of them do favour above average temperatures here, uh, probably quite mild, um, mild spells at least um, to come with that. Uh, but that's not the only thing we're showing you today. We'll also go through the CFS seasonal model, uh, which is the um, month by month anomalies. So we've got November to start with, that has higher pressure strongly built to the east over Eastern Europe, winds in from a southerly or southeasterly direction, that would be a very mild rest of November. December you can see high pressure building to the north, blocking features, but the Atlantic is reigning supreme, so a westerly flow dominating there. Into January we've got higher pressure through Western Europe, that may keep things mostly dry with a bit of frost in places. February, oh dear me, <laughs> that's pretty poor. Low pressure towards Greenland and Iceland, probably a west of the Atlantic driven flow. And March, high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, westerly, northwesterly wind. Wow, that was very quick and very uninteresting as well. Well, I'll tell you what, these um these charts aren't too aren't too interesting at the moment on these um on these runs. Um uh, I just wanted to quickly show you the um ensembles from the GFS. Uh, for the next few weeks, there's a lot of uncertainty still about the potential for cooler weather into the second half of November, emphasised by the latest GFS run. No point looking at the operational runs today. They're much of a muchness. They're just constantly flipping and flopping uh, from each other, as you'd expect. ECM went cold one run. The next one, it's mild as ever. GFS went cold for the midnight run. And now look at the 12Z flying to the moon, one of the milder runs. So um, definitely for the next few days, you can see the trend is above average uh, with the upper air temperatures and the temperatures at the ground level may even reach 17 to 18 degrees in some isolated spots tomorrow as you saw earlier on in the video but then into the longer medium to longer range um, maybe dropping around average with the temperatures um, precipitation spikes are evident but they're nothing too crazy maybe just a few showers um, and probably most likely to be most unsettled in the north and the west as usual but you can see that there are a few, um, quite a few colder runs in there. Um, nothing ridiculously cold because, you know, it's middle of November. But there are some colder runs in there. But also there are a couple of mild outliers as well. So uh, really, it's a bit of an unreliable picture. But as I've said before, I still think the last 10 days of November are definitely one to watch. Um, the, the special second half of November in general, start of December, definitely a period to watch, as well as the Polar Vortex, which I'll tell you more about tomorrow. Um, I do thank you all for, my, for your feedback on that video. Um, definitely need to um, iron up on some things, but it was my first time really looking at it in depth for a video. But yeah, thank you all very much for watching today's video. Hopefully you all found it informative. Consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, joining the Discord and all that good stuff in the description, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.